Hi, I'm Travis Alabanza. I'm a performance artist and theatre maker based in the UK. And for the last six years, I've been making work that archives what it means to be gender non-conforming in this country. A burger was thrown at me in broad daylight in April 2016 on Waterloo Bridge while someone yelled the word tranny. I think over a hundred people saw, and I know that no one did anything. If I become obsessed with the burger, understand how it works, how it flies, how it smells, how it lands, then maybe I could have some agency over it. Maybe I could feel like I was once in control. Imagine that burger now. Go on. Imagine it in front of you, the most typical burger you can see, the emoji, the archetype, the original, the real burger, the burger bun, a piece of dough. You know, a piece of dough is just a piece of dough until you figure out it is supposed to be part of the burger to make the bun. Then there are many things you must do to make it right, make it work turning flour and yeast to whole things, heating things, changing things, altered to circles through knives and cuts, kneaded and poked, stretched out and pinched, moulding and ploughing the dough to eventually be the bun that will eventually hold your burger. The burger bun must be round, top heavy, bottom light, one bigger than the other, always one bigger than the other, big, holding small in place, top to bottom. We're not aiming for equal. But imagine that burger now. Go on, imagine it in front of you, the most typical burger you can see, the emoji, the archetype, the original, the real burger. I'm Octavia and I'm a freelance performer and performance maker. I'm the artistic director of my own queer feminist theatre company, Category Peach. Um, I work at Curve Theatre as an assistant practitioner where I um, help run the young acting classes and I'm also chair of the youth board at Nottingham Playhouse. My name is Chio, I'm a performance artist, a drag king, um, a dancer, a stripper, sex worker, a professional hustler. I work in theatre spaces, in club nights, in festivals, in um, dirty, smutty pub basements. Um, you, you'll catch me anywhere. I'm Ebum, Ebu Shudibo. I'm an artist and a writer. I live in St. Ives. My work is generally about gender, history and the body. I think a lot about what it means to have had a history that's erased and destroyed and the effects of that on the emotions of people and also what it means for black trans people, trans feminine people in particular in constructing yourself in their visions of their body and um, the sources of their inspiration. Thank you so much for coming to my dinner party today. I wanted to invite you all here because I think it is not often that people that work in live performance and theatre and the arts get a chance to talk off of the stage, especially as all of us in some way work with our identities as being both racialized and also, whatever word we want to use, trans, gender non-conforming, or in my case, a cross-dressing deviant sinner. <laughs> So I wanted to bring us all here so that we had a chance to be able to talk, to archive ourselves in conversation, mm. and to have a chance to connect when it's not in a kebab shop at 2 a.m. What made you go to performance? Why do you take to the stage? And do you feel like it was a choice? I've always been involved with kind of drama and performance. Um, and then in university, I kind of experimented a lot with kind of gender in performance, um, which I think Again, wasn't really a choice because that was me kind of like finding ways to like push against like the kind of rigidness of like just ge the gender structures mm -hmm. um, and trying to kind of find my own identity. Um, and then I, I actually um, <laughs> actually chose my name because I gave it to one of the characters in one of my uni pieces. Oh my God, no way. <laughs> and I got jealous of the name. <laughs> 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 I was like, no, no, I'm having that. Like, <laughs> I was kind of basically trying to break down the kind of binary model of gender um, and as kind of part of that I 
kind of I presented these two characters that were really one that was completely like hyper masculinized and another one hyper feminized. So the hyper masculinized character was called Hunter, like okay. <laughs> literally very right. yes. Um, it's either hyper masculinized or like the white blue haired trans mask that we see on <laughs> Hunter. Can, <laughs> Hunter's versatile in those ways. This be my first call. <laughs> 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 I know a few hunters. <laughs> I think as like black bodies and black trans bodies and black feminine bodies were seen and consumed in like particular ways, really like overly sexualized ways. And so I, I'm always quite controlled about that as well, really kind of thinking about how my body is consumed a lot by people. So it feels good, but to get to the good feeling, there's a lot of control that I have to have or feel like mm. I have control. So there's like movements that I make, the costumes that I wear and like the lighting and all these things to kind of really guard against that kind of sexual consumption, the erotic consumption of my body. I like performance because I think the world is pretty bleak <laughs> and I really, I hate humans most of the time. Mm -hmm. I think humans in general were very self-involved, especially growing up in London, like Londoners suck. Londoners think in like, they're, they're in their own universe. Everyone is out for themselves. And I just have a, a, a very bleak view on humanity. And I feel like with the right kind of performance or like with my experiences in discovering performance, um, it is really a moment where everyone just like shuts the fuck up and just watches something. Mm. And, and there's a sense of like calming and soothing in that. One of the main things I experienced working as a drag king, working as someone who's not white, working as someone who's trans, who's an immigrant in this country, um, and as someone who um, does identify as a gay man on some on some scale. I think cis gay men have a lot of unlearning to do about just how much they contribute to misogyny in everyday life from like their feelings on vaginas to the lack of like um, appreciation for drag kings to all these misogynistic jokes about lesbians that just exist mm. in the gay scene. I'm intrigued to know if it was a choice for other people because for me it felt like the complete opposite of a choice mm. because I think that I'm performing every day when I go outside. Something happens in British culture and I do think it's particular, it's different in different cultures but I do think something happens in England where like, you know, everyone is, part of the national identity here I think is to be miserable. Um, you know, whether that's about like the, the weather, the food, the queen, the lack of seasoning, everyone is just <laughs> destined for like, you know, this really harsh miserableness. But you bring like people to the Panto, right? Which was the only kind of shows I went to when I was younger. And suddenly people that are so stern faced are like laughing, are cheering, are speaking out of turn, mm. all these things that British people don't do. And I was quite obsessed with what it meant that the stage could change people's, um, the things that they thought were ingrained within them could change. And so I think that's why I use performance to figure out how people can be honest, mm. right? Mm. So rather than coming on the stage to pretend, I'm interested in how we can go use the stage or things that feel performance-like to actually be more honest than we are out of the room. What it feels like to work in this industry, um, do you feel held? Does it feel like an industry that's safe for people like you or respects people like you? Well, there's one job where um, they refuse to pay my travel, um, even though they were paying travel of other people. Um, and I just kind of felt like, well, I don't want to be like one of the black trans women that have died. I don't want mm. to die as well. Mm. Um, so I feel like I need to get, you know, I, I can't just walk home, which I don't think is a big request. If you want me to enrich your project, then you better make sure that you've got the safety things in place for me to mm -hmm. be able to do mm -hmm. that and to be able to get there mm -hmm. and come back safely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
in the same way that we're being used for the clout, it's like I do feel a lot of the time very like tokenized and like I'm here, like people don't know about me or my work or my practice before they invite me to come do some things sometimes. And so they'll ask me to do like random stuff and I'm like, why am I here, <laughs> you know? Mm. And like, you're not supported or people don't really get what you do or why you're there and you're like, but you've chosen me for a particular reason, why is that? And then the only reason I can land on is because I'm like a black trans person and that gives them all these things and like ticks their boxes so they can get funding for whatever, whatever. And then the support in like, who can I speak to? Like, how safe is it here? Like, where can I go? Or like, where do I avoid is like also important. They don't know because they don't do any of this work because they don't think about it. Like we just said, they don't quite understand. Drag in itself hasn't become like, a, a serious career for a lot of people until like recent years. Mm. The industry of drag, um, the whole thing revolves around one TV show, which is like an anomaly in, in, in industries. It's almost as if it's money first and then everything else comes mm. second. So this is when I got into quote unquote this industry, mm. Um, I fell in love as a queer person who saw other queers on TV yeah. and at the time I wasn't thinking about who's assumed female at birth or assumed male at birth or what type of drag people are doing. I'm just like, camp queers on the telly, like, let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. If like, um, Michael Brown wasn't murdered, would I be here? Or like, if George Floyd hadn't died, hadn't been murdered, mm. would I be working here? You know, that kind of stuff, like, it's, I feel a lot of the time my career is like, built on, like, white guilt and also like the death of like brothers and sisters and things like that um and so that's also got its own kind of pain to work through as well like what do you think the industry needs to do to support you as a creator if we're taking into consideration being racialized and trans what would it like what does the industry need to do how can it get better i feel there's so much responsibility on us to like have to set it up ourselves and like you said um about kind of mainly working on black projects being black organized because mm -hmm. it's not being and like i feel like you gotta meet us halfway um and at least like once sort of if we're, if we're starting stuff up um i think some of it's actually them taking the initiative rather than it constantly be us having to go apply for funding if it's clearly important work that's going on and important spaces um i think organizations just need to literally just approaches. Mm. It does feel like we're in this different moment where we're all visible in ways that we haven't been able to be before. Mm. It doesn't really matter how much you're seen if it doesn't come with any structural support. Mm -hmm. Actually, it leads to more danger, more turbulence, more varied emotions, right? Visibility mm -hmm. isn't um, a stable project, right? Because you have experienced extreme highs of being seen and then extreme lows of like none of your conditions actually changing. Mm -hmm. And so I think I think the future is where we learn as a community the shortfalls of visibility and how to like actually invest structurally in our future. And that comes down even to like the apps that we use. Sorry to get all like techie or whatever, but like no, no. even just like the fact all our work is on Instagram, they censor like particular bodies yeah. that like are in our community. Like all these things are like, yeah. we're basically experiencing what it means to like get thrown into somewhere that like structures are actually built to like destroy us. And so now we're feeling that hangover period. So I hope what's next is like leaving those structures and building our own. How are you? We're good. We're yeah. good. I know I'm asking like. <laughs> I hate people. So everyone, did you enjoy your burgers? Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, so good, thank you. Does anyone have a sweet tooth? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, funny you should say that um, because just for our dinner today, we have had hand delivered, walked across the ocean by foot, uh, an Australian delicacy that is quite rare to get. We have Tim Tams. Oh, oh my God. Yes, yeah, well, so, yeah, exactly. Thinking of dreams and going beyond this dinner, um, I want to know, we've spoken a lot about where we're at in the present, but I want to know that if in 10 years, you as an artist are surrounded with time, resources, support, health, friends, family, all the things that you like need to be like a whole person and working in the arts. What is the thing that you're doing or making? What does it look like? I, I love this idea of kind of building this kind of 
what this queer, what a queer royal family would look like, um, and kind of almost this kind of event where the audience are coming in and meeting them, and almost in some ways having a commentary on the British monarchy, um, but also kind of coming from kind of ballroom culture as well. I don't feel like I need to make work for white people or with white people. Like that's already being mm. done, mm. Uh, or for you know straight work. I don't think I've ever done a project where there's been not been anything unqueer in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think what I'd want to do is I would want to um, dedicate time to making work on more work on intergenerational trauma. Mm. I think it'd be so interesting to just like look at the parallels of misogyny like through a generation where you take you change the continent you change mm. the time you change the age and yet there's so much that is similar there needs to be a platform in this industry in my industry where um, just everyone is platformed like mm. everyone is given a stage everyone's given equal opportunities I think drag is one of the only industries that I can think of where you are still allowed to discriminate based on body and expression and anatomy. Mm -hmm. And it breaches so many equality laws. Like in no other industry or not many, can you turn around and be like, no, we can't platform you because of X, Y, Z, because then it's just discrimination. But with drag, mm -hmm. because we're hiding behind like what it means to be gay and what it means to be queer and makeup, these like nuances of discrimination are just allowed. One of the things I want to do, like when you were talking about like a platforming and we've talked about networks, it's just like I would love to build just a, a network of like trans artists so then we can just like make work with each other, platform each other and just like create something sustainable and make sure that we all have resources to create our visions. I feel like for me, art is a space where I can like make myself and like really think about what that process means and really sit with sit with everything at a slower pace. If I had unlimited resources, I would be funding work. Mm -hmm. I want us to get to a point where we don't have to write long applications for something to happen. Less hoops for people to jump by to make work, right? So that they don't have to like explain themselves away yeah. in order to like make something. Thank you for coming to dinner. Mm -hmm. Cheers. 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 Trans for trans.